Hello, everyone. We're going to get started. Thank you so much for um, joining our collaborative. Tonight's collaborative is Something is Better Than Nothing, a daily writing plan for getting your dissertation done. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Dave Ng, managing partner of University XP, who will be facilitating tonight's uh, collaborative. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the chat. I'll be monitoring them quietly, but I'm going to turn it over now to Dr. Ng. All right. Well, thank you, Candice. I appreciate it. Hey, everyone. My name is Dr. Dave Ang. I am the manager partner at University XP, and I had the pleasure of meeting Candice at a past uh, national conference at the um, uh, NASPA conference in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania um, last year. Um, she presented on gamification, which is something that um, both of us um, uh, have been studying and been using in our practice, and that's how I connected with, that, with her that way. But um, when she posed to me that um, she was looking for some presenters for some of the ses sessions that she was conducting online. I jumped at the opportunity to present on something that I think I know uh, a lot about. Uh, this one's going to be on dissertation writing. I realize we have um, uh, three attendees right now. So we have Michelle, Roslyn, and um, Absim. I'm not exactly sure what your name is, but thank you for being here today. I appreciate it. Um, you should be able to see the uh, presentation on screen right now. Um, I'm going to uh, go to the next slide and give you a little bit more of my background um, and what I've been doing in the past. So my name is Dave. Uh, I have over 12 years of higher education experience. And I've been working mostly in student affairs. So student affairs, um, those are folks that work in higher education and student activities, maybe residential life, uh, new student orientation, athletics, other areas like that. I've also uh, served as a faculty member before, uh, an adjunct faculty member at St. Thomas Aquinas College, where I was teaching um, public speaking, communication arts, as well as our leadership program. Um, I've also conducted research in this area, uh, specifically in games, gamification, and games-based learning. Um, I think one of my uh, proudest achievements was not only completing my doctorate, but completing it uh, in under three years, uh, specifically two years, eight months, and 30 days. Uh, I know this because I was um, timing myself, and I also wrote a blog post on a doctorate by the numbers, all the specific metrics that I was um, collecting when I was um, completing my dissertation. Um, one of my other claims is I published a book called Other Duties as Assigned uh, during my work I was doing with Semester at C when I served there as a resident director in 2011. I was also interviewed by the New York Times on suitcase schools. And right now I consult privately on design, training, and writing with University XP. Uh, some of my past clients include the Mentor Collective, uh, the Museum of Ice Cream, Illinois West, and Illinois Western University. And one of my fun facts is that I have been seasick in every time zone. So I am quite the traveler. Um, with Semester at Sea, I did get to travel quite a bit. And that is my fun fact. I have been seasick in every single time zone. So right now I wanted to go over some learning outcomes for this session. So I really only have two that I'd like to focus on today. So one of them is you are going to learn to outline a structure for writing. And then the other learning outcome is that you are going to develop a plan for time investment. So these are two fundamental things that I use in order to um, complete my doctorate. Uh, and I think they are two habits that I feel all of you would benefit from if you uh, are using them in your practice right now. And if you are not using them, I think that if you incorporate them into your practice, it will definitely help going into the future. And welcome our other attendee, HPDV4. I appreciate you being here today. So here are the things that I'd like to cover. So today we are going to cover um, two items, specifically structure and time. Uh, those are the two things that I feel like hold up a lot of um, students and doctoral programs specifically because they have not yet defined a structure for how they want to write. Really, when you get to the dissertation phase, it's very much a point where you are defining the structure for yourself. And some people really thrive in those environments, but other people are very much used to a classroom environment where there is very specific structure. Uh, and the second thing I wanna talk about is time, specifically how time is used, how time is invested, and how you best use it in order to accomplish your goal, which is to finish writing your dissertation and also finish your doctoral program. Uh, I talked to Candice before. In the future, if uh, everything works out and you all like this program, I'd like to talk about three additional topics. Um, they would be writing, uh, momentum, and self-care. Uh, those are three areas that I feel um, are also significant areas, but I want to know how everyone thinks about these first two. 
uh, writing obviously is very important because that is what you do as part of a, um, a doctoral program and completing your dissertation. Uh, momentum is also incredibly important because once you develop it, you want to hold on to it and keep going. And then self-care is also important just because um, oftentimes the doctoral uh, dissertation and the doctoral journey can be very isolating and that can be hard for a lot of different people. So practicing self-care is going to be important as well. But right now I'd like to jump into structure. So uh, covering structure, there are five different things that I like to use and five different things that I've used in the past in order to be successful in my doctoral program. So number one is to begin with the end in mind. I mean, I know a lot of people indicate that one of their goals is that they want to earn a doctorate and they want to finish the program. But sometimes thinking about a different end would do uh, you better in terms of um, accomplishing your specific goal of finishing your dissertation, which will help you accomplish your other goals. Second thing I want to account for is making every keystroke count. I know that one of the reasons I was able to complete my doctorate so quickly was I was able to use every keystroke and every letter and every blog post and every paper and literature re review I wrote uh, contributed in some way to my dissertation. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Number three, and this one comes up a lot, setting deadlines, but specifically setting deadlines that aren't so challenging that they're hard to meet or setting deadlines so far in the future that they don't really have any meaning, but setting meaningful deadlines. Uh, keeping in contact with your advisor. Uh, this is an area that I, I focused on a lot. Uh, my advisor was very welcoming and was able to provide me a lot of good feedback and also was able to give me a lot of good information on how to complete my, um, uh, my doctorate at this pace. But... I, um, but in addition to that, I was also able to um, uh, update my advisor on what I was doing on a regular basis. And then the last thing would be to just use your reference manager. So some of you may be using reference managers right now. If you are, I applaud you. Um, I did not go down that road as quickly as I would have wanted, but then talking to some of my other colleagues, I realized that that is actually a very, very important part of the process. So using a reference manager is something that I would highly suggest. All right, so now I want to launch into uh, structure. So begin with the end in mind. And now I want to address three different things that I've used in the past to, um, to help, with your, help you with your dissertation writing at this phase. So one, um, you can always start with a submission date. So say, uh, I know that my advisor said that if I turned in a draft by this date, he would be able to review by this date and I would be able to continue writing from that date on. So based on that, that information I got from my advisor, I would then um, develop my schedule on writing at a regular interval in order to meet that submission date. So I know that if I need to turn in you know, 20 typewritten pages, double spaced, I'm shooting for probably 10 single space pages, which is what I was um, used to writing. In order to get those single space pages, I would need X number of references. In order to get those references, I need to read X number of journal articles and so on and so forth. And I would just block all of that time out from the day that it was due, say like on June 1st and then working backwards. Like I'll need, in order to write that amount, I'll need so many days in order to uh, write that amount, I'll need X number of references and articles, et cetera. So building backwards from that date is one of the tactics I had used in the past. Another thing I do was to build, uh, start with an outline, and this is a way to build forward. So some people are not very comfortable building backwards, specifically like looking at the due date. They may have read a lot. They may have uh, had a lot of different journal articles, so they may want to already develop a structure. And in that case, I would have you develop an outline. Now, the, the key part about the outline here is that it is not developing an outline so that you write it in a linear order. So specifically going like, I'm going to write my introduction, then I'm going to write... Um, uh, one of my first discussion points and second discussion points, third discussion points, et cetera. Uh, when I say build an outline and write from that, it is, you know, what, what do you see is really resonating in the literature right now? And what can you write about that? Uh, don't worry about it connecting to other things. Just write that specific part of, of your dissertation right now, just because one, you already have the idea and two, you're in a position to, um, to write about it. Candice, did you say something? Okay. Um, so uh, I think that um, uh, starting with an outline is, is really good, but not necessarily writing it in a very uh, linear order. Um, 
And then the other thing I would talk about is uh, start with content, build outwards. And what I mean by this is, again, like if you're reading literature or if you're going through your data and you want to start writing, that is good. I actually, through my process, as I was reviewing data, I conducted a qualitative study. I would write myself individual memos. Or I'd write myself individual notes uh, just because I was reviewing some audio and I was transcribing some stuff and it just really resonated with me. And then later on, I was able to take all of that information and I was able to restructure it into my dissertation. So all of those notes and other things uh, that I had written before, I was able to incorporate somewhere into my dissertation. All right, so that, uh, now I wanna talk about making every single keystroke count. So I brought this up at the very beginning, but if possible, you want to be able to use every single piece that you've written in the past in your dissertation somewhere. So for me, this had been for any papers I had written in a past class. I made sure that if I could choose a specific topic, it was going to be about the topic I was planning on writing my dissertation on because then I could use references. I could use text that I had written in that paper for my dissertation. This is also especially true for using annotated bibliographies. I only had to do a couple of them when I was in my um, doctoral program, but I also made sure, hey, this annotated bibliography is gonna focus on this part of experiential learning, which was also um, uh, the basis of my dissertation uh, and my study. So I made sure I could use that annotated bibliography in the future for my dissertation. Uh, same thing with literature reviews. I did a lot, a lot of literature reviews when I was in my um, doctoral program. And it was great because I was able to take all of that information and I was able to incorporate it directly into my dissertation. So I thought that was incredibly helpful at that point. And then depending on what type of um, uh, this, uh, doctoral program you're in, um, you may have to contribute to discussion board posts or anything else like that. If you do, I would also consider using those as well because sometimes we would have to read literature from the class. Sometimes we would have to go find our own literature online and read it and, and talk about it in the discussion boards. And whenever we could do that, I was going to find literature about my specific research topic. So I made that count. So my number one priority in this area is make every keystroke count. If you know what you wanna study, make sure that every piece of literature and every assignment you're doing papers annotated bibs, literature reviews, and discussion board posts all provide you really great content that you could use for your dissertation. All right, now I wanna talk about setting deadlines, but not necessarily just talking about the act of setting deadlines, but this is what I want you to do it with. Whenever I set a deadline, I would communicate that directly to my advisor. So I would say, um, all right, uh, based on everything you've told me, I am going to turn in a draft to you in exactly 21 days. And by this date, you will have a finished draft for me. And I would build backwards from that date exactly what I needed to do. Uh, and once I did that, I would also share that date with some of my other classmates. And I, I would tell them, you know, like my writing's going pretty well. Uh, I shared this date with my advisor and I'm going to meet that date. Um, but I wouldn't stop there. I would share it with as many other people as I could. I would share it with my classmates. Um, I did not have a writing partner at the time, but I do know some other doctoral students have writing partners. So I suggest connecting with your writing partner, sharing with them the deadline. Uh, and then some people, and I don't know some of my colleagues themselves have just shared it online via social media. And they say, I'm gonna turn in um, uh, my next draft of chapter two by this date, and I'm going to make it happen and waiting for uh, that person gets some accolades online and then, you know, completing that draft. But I think uh, setting deadlines is important, but also making sure that those deadlines are communicated with many people is also important as well. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is keeping in contact with your advisor. And when you do that, um, you wanna do a couple of things. So one, I said that whenever I set a deadline, I would communicate that directly with my advisor. Um, depending on your relationship with your advisor, which is always going to be unique from program to program and from individual to individual and faculty member to faculty member, uh, you may be in a position to communicate your status. Um, most advisors tend to be full-time faculty members, so they don't have a whole lot of time. So if you just send a one-off email that just says like, I wrote a hundred words a day, uh, thanks, then it probably isn't worth their time. But if you just communicate their status and say, hey, listen, I know I'm turning in this, um, uh, this latest draft of this paper to you by uh, you know, September 1st, and I've gotten a quarter of the way through and I'm looking good so far. That is a good status update. And I think that that is something that you can share because it indicates to your advisor that you know, you're making good progress. And it also is a reaffirmation for yourself that you are making good progress. 
Uh, and another thing, and I, I feel like a lot of my other classmates have run into this, where they may get some feedback from an advisor, but it's not very actionable or it's not super clear. Um, through your communication with your advisor, you can get that clarification, specifically through discourse. So for me, most of my communication with my advisor was through email, and we were able to get through like nine out of 10 things. However, some things um, we had a misunderstanding about, and we were able to clear it up, uh, sometimes by email, sometimes we hopped on Zoom or something else in order to, to communicate with each other that way. Uh, but keeping in contact with your advisor is something I would highly recommend you do, if anything, to communicate status updates. But you can also get clarification through that discourse you have with them. And then the last thing I would recommend would be to use a reference manager. Oh man, I can't believe I discovered this so late, but using a reference, ma reference manager um, sets you up for success only because you are um, accurately citing all of the references that you're using, hopefully in APA, whatever format you're um, using right now. And uh, you're going to be able to save all of that information later so that you can include it in your uh, references list for your dissertation. Uh, so some of the big ones out there are EndNote, um, EasyBib, um, Digio, uh, RefWorks. Personally, I used RefWorks um, just because that was something that they used at Northeastern as part of the library system. So whenever I uh, downloaded a PDF, I was also able to generate the APA citation directly from that PDF. Uh, Digio is really interesting right now because it is a, um, a Chrome application that allows you to uh, mark up web pages and PDFs as well and allows you to save all of that information similar to the other reference managers. Uh, I can't say that I know a whole lot about EndNote and EasyBib only because I did not use them. However, some of my other classmates had used them in the past. But the main takeaway I want everyone to learn here is that you should definitely use a reference manager. Uh, having a reference manager definitely saves a lot of work and it also prevents plagiarism because you're able to cite and reference all your work throughout your process as soon as you begin your, your doctoral program all the way to the end. All right, so I want to review the um, five points of structure we talked about right now. So one of them is beginning with the end in mind, uh, meaning you can build backwards, you can build from an outline, you can build outwards. Uh, making every keystroke count. So no matter what else you're doing in your program, whether that's writing papers or annotated bibliographies or literature reviews or discussion board posts, make sure you get all those keystrokes to count. It'll save you a lot of time and hassle later. Uh, number three, set deadlines and not necessarily just set them for yourself, but communicate those out through social media, through colleagues or anyone else that you care to share that information with. Uh, keep in contact with your advisor. If anything, you get some clarification through discourse. And you can also communicate with your advisor that you're making good progress towards your goal because you had set a deadline with them and you were indicated that you're going to turn in a draft by this date and that you are 25% of the way through, 50% of the way through, etc. And then the one we just talked about before, uh, make sure you use a reference manager. I can't stress that enough. I learned that too late, but making sure that you have all your references in order when you um, are, are writing your dissertation is incredibly, incredibly useful. And I hope that you all are, um, uh, are recording all your references right now. All right, the second major area that I wanna talk about today is time. Uh, and this one I'm gonna break down uh, one of the other concepts that I was talking about before, which is working backwards from a due, due date. Um, my second thing I want to talk about is having a routine. And the third one is making a schedule. So I know that some of these things you may already be doing, maybe in different practices or different formats, but I want to talk about it specifically as it applies to this, um, uh, this program that we're conducting right now. So one is work backwards from a due date. And that was one of the things I had recommended before when setting a structure. So when I, when I work backwards from a due date, I'm always constantly reviewing my current status. Uh, when I wake up in the morning and I know that I have to do some writing, I, I look at um, uh, at least two things. What is due now? So what did I commit myself to finish today? Like, did I have an expected word count? Did I mean to hit like 100 words or 500 words or 1,000 words or anything else? And then what is due soon? So, you know, what is due tomorrow and what is due in the next couple of days? And I say that because... Maybe yesterday was a bad day. I could not get a whole lot of writing out. I could only churn out maybe about 200 or 300 words. Well, that means I got to um, make up for yesterday. And I also have to go through today's goal in order to meet my deadline to you know, prepare a draft and have that ready for my advisor in time. In addition, I also have to consider where, what is going to be due soon. So what is going to be due tomorrow and the day after, maybe this weekend, et cetera. 
I need to constantly manage my expectations to determine where am I in the process? Where did I fall back? Where did I gain ground? And am I, am I on progress towards meeting my goal? And then from that point, you're working backwards. So for me, I would uh, first work at days and then month, uh, months and weeks uh, between um, today and when I hope to return the next draft to my dissertation advisor. And then from that, I would determine what I would be working on. And what worked out best for me was that I didn't say that I'm going to commit like two hours or three hours every day to writing. I would just say, today I'm going to write a thousand words. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to write a thousand words towards this, uh, the body of the next draft I'm going to submit. And then I set aside a couple of days to review all my work, um, edit, you know, copy edit, remove for structure, grammar, um, um, punctuation, everything else, and just making sure that everything fits well together. Um, I would do a, um, a soft edit on my computer. I would do a hard edit, meaning I would print out the pages and I would actually review it with a pen because sometimes I would catch things that way. And I would do an audio edit, which I also highly recommend, which means that I would read each word aloud as if I was communicating this with a person and seeing if that text worked well in that environment. Because sometimes you caught things in the audio edit that I didn't catch in a soft or hard edit. All right, so now I want to talk about having a routine. So uh, for me, this is kind of a mirror of what I had talked about before. But now I want you to consider what you are doing every single day. So whenever I was in my writing mode, I would consider what did I work on yesterday? Specifically, like what was I writing in the body of my dissertation? Where did I leave off? What am I doing today? So what is on the to-do list today for me to write? How am I going to um, further contribute to this idea or how am I going to further build on it? And then what will I work on tomorrow? So specifically, uh, will this idea be concluded? Will I start a whole new body or paragraph or something else then? Uh, where is this all fitting in on the timeline? And one of the best things I can really, really recommend for uh, having a routine is to just write often write regularly and write in the same mindset. So for me, I had a Spotify playlist I always listened to that helped me concentrate. And I would sit at my desk and I would write. And I would just write to meet a word count goal. Or sometimes I would write to just say like, I got 10 minutes free right now. I'm just going to write and contribute to this. Uh, but I would always write in the same mindset, which was I had my earbuds in. I was focused. I was listening to music. And I'm writing right now. But a lot of other uh, doctoral students I talk to are kind of burned out on writing just because they're doing a whole lot of writing on a regular basis. So I, I would recommend writing in other formats. So for me, I have kept a daily journal every day for the past, since I guess 2009 at this point, so 10 years. Uh, and that's what I did. Every day I wrote in my journal, I reflected, and I also wrote in my dissertation. Uh, and that was because um, I was able to reflect on the entire process. And also I just sometimes got burnt out on writing my dissertation and I had to write something else. So for me, it was always having a routine and always be writing, but not necessarily always writing your dissertation. And then the last thing I want to talk about is making a, a schedule and then setting that schedule and doing it every day. So whether you set aside five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or a whole hour each day, um, set aside that time and then write for that time. And if anyone here is familiar with the Pomodoro method, um, that's something I would recognize too, because that really limits the amount of time you can spend on any given task or an activity. So in this case, when you use a Pomodoro, you're writing for 25 minutes, take a five, 10 minute break, and then you return again to write for another 25 minutes. Uh, this helps you in order to maintain momentum, but you also don't get burnt out because you're able to take a break in between them. Another thing that I would recommend is I would time box. So what that means is every day I would have a to-do list of things to do. And those could be personal things. Those could be dissertation related things. Those could be professional things. But I would take all those items I would group them together and I would box out my time on my calendar and say like, you know, from 10 to 11, I'm working on this. And from 11 to 11.15, I'm taking a break. 11.15 to 11.45, I'm working on this. And that actually helped me because I realized that when I first got up in the morning and I had coffee, I was the most in the mood to write. I had the most energy and I could work at that time. Whereas in the early afternoon to late afternoon, I was not that productive. So I used that time to really check up on emails, take care of like some low hanging fruit on my to-do list. And then in the evening when I felt more productive, again, I would return to writing and I would block up my schedule like that. So I'd recommend doing that. 
And then the last item I would recommend is just remember to take breaks. One of the things I learned with time boxing is that I time boxed out my entire day and I didn't leave any gaps for me to take a break or do anything else. And I think that is incredibly important. The same way that writing something else is important, that you don't want to just concentrate on writing your dissertation. For me, it was also writing in my journal because it was something different to write about. It was a very reflective process. For you, it can be something else, but I would just highly recommend that you take breaks at regular intervals. So to review all of the time considerations again, one, you know, work backwards from a due date. Consider what you did yesterday, what you're going to do today. Have a routine. It doesn't even have to be that long. So set aside 5, 10, 15, 20, 60 minutes a day. Just decide to write for that time. Write in the same mood. Write at the time that works best for you. Uh, I would make a schedule. So if you are going to make a schedule, you can time box, you can set aside specific times in your day. You can set aside um, your best waking hours like in the morning or in the evening or in the afternoon or when, whenever, um, but set a schedule and stick with it. That schedule is going to be the way that you govern how productive you are and what you will be writing that day. So the summary here that I want you to, to, um, to glean is that you want to develop your own structure. I conveyed the structure that worked for me, but that may not be the structure for everyone else. I know that I had one classmate who was a, um, a parent and she was working full time and going to school full time. And really the only time she could get time to herself to write was between like 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. at night. And she would take her laptop and she would go to the garage and she would sit in her minivan and she would write for those four hours. Now, for me, that didn't really work out because I don't want to be writing that late and I'm probably very tired at that point. But for her, that was time away from her husband, time away from her kids. And just sitting in her minivan with her laptop was the time when she could crank out all that material. So for her, that structure really worked. For me, my structure really worked. For you, it can be the same or it can be different. And the other thing I want you to remember is I want you to invest in yourself because this dissertation process is, is very much based on you. Yes, there are a lot of other people involved, especially when it comes to your committee, but you're going to want to invest in yourself. And specifically, I say that because you are going to produce this dissertation. If you're tired, if you're hungry, you cannot be in the best mindset in order to write. So invest in yourself. Take naps, take breaks, take a time to just write something else, take a time to do the things that you enjoy. You don't have to be writing all the time. However, that should be your goal in order to complete your dissertation. So the main takeaways I have for you here is that this is going to be a process. Um, it's not a one and done procedure. If it was and it was that easy, a lot more people would have doctorates, but it's not. It's much more difficult. Uh, like I said before, this process is going to be about you. So I want you to invest in yourself in order to determine what is going to be the best course of action here and what you can do in order to reach your outcome, which is to finish your dissertation and graduate. So I want you to invest in this process to see the goal, which is to finish your dissertation. And way back when, one of my other professors told me um, that the best dissertation is a finished one. Uh, the dissertation will not be your magnum opus. Really, it is the very first time that you are engaging in a, an empirical study in the fulfillment of a doctoral degree. So it does not have to be your best work. It should be, your very, it should be very good work, but really think about it at the end of the day, what, gets you, grad, what uh, gets you past the finish line, what gets you on the stage in your cap and gown is that your dissertation will be finished. So the best dissertation is a finished one. So thank you for spending your time with me. I put up some of my information on the screen. Again, my do name is Dr. Dave Eng. I'm the managing partner at University XP. Uh, you can uh, contact me. I am at dave at universityxp.com or you can go to my website, www.universityxp.com. Uh, the additional topics I would like to present on the future if this worked out for you is writing, uh, developing your momentum and also managing self-care. So with that in mind, uh, I know we have a few minutes left over, so I can take some questions if either any of you want to unmute your microphones. Otherwise, I will also be checking the uh, chat uh, box right now. So I will open it up to questions if anyone ha has it, or if Candice, you'd like to come in and say anything else. I just want to say that thank you so much for the presentation. So many pearls of wisdom. I was just jotting down so many things. You, if you could see me, I was just nodding vociferously here. Mm -hmm. What you said about... Um, you know, making what you said, making every keystroke count. I hadn't thought about it in those terms, but that is advice I've given so many times uh -huh. to make sure you, you know, use the information or use your coursework 
as part of your preparation for your dissertation. So I can't um, co-sign on that more strongly, but all of the points were really helpful. I thank you so much for sharing that wisdom. I'm looking to see if anyone has questions. I, I know I'm anticipating this is gonna be a very popular um, recording. So we are recording this and I'll um, include this in our library of recordings for our um, collaboratives that we've done so far. Um, do you have, and will you share the presentation, the uh, slides with us as well? Yeah, I absolutely. I can actually, I'll email those to you, Candice, and you can send it out to your list. Thank you so much. I, I know a number of our past attendees have asked, and I am collecting them, everyone. I haven't forgotten. I just haven't gotten a chance to put the page up together for everybody mm -hmm. to put them, but I am compiling them, and we'll put them all together. I can go ahead and say we would love to have you back uh, on those additional topics. So I'm already kind of plugging you in for March and April. Cool. So we'll... Um, we'll make sure we cover all of those topics. They're all very important, very valuable, and I can't wait to see what you do with them. Cool. Uh, we had one question from Epsom in the uh, chat, but should, are we are we cut on time, Candace? No, or no, I... no, by all means, please yeah, answer the okay, question. Okay, so Epsom asked, uh, what strategies would you advise if we get off track? Uh, so for me, one of the things I did in that particular scenario was if I told my advisor I was going to have a draft due by a specific date, so say September 1st, uh, I would make sure that I have all of my work booked up through August 20th. So that means that I could turn in a draft by August 20th, but I know I'm going to have about, you know, 10 days left um, to address any of the things that, that could go wrong if I go off track. Now, for me, sometimes that meant that, you know, I submitted my um, application to IRB and it didn't come back or I had to re-edit or something else. And, you know, sometimes life happens, like you have to attend to a family emergency or anything else. So one of the number one things that I recommend is, is um, being proactive. So if you are going to set a specific deadline, make sure that you can complete the work like maybe 10, seven to 10 days beforehand. If, however, you have a very tight deadline and you need to get back on track, just realize that a lot of things are going to be a zero-sum game. And when I say that, it's that, you know, if you missed your, dead, you missed your word count yesterday, you're going to have to make up that, uh, that word count at some later time. So that's either going to be today or tomorrow or something else. Um, I think some of the best ways I was able to correct myself if I did get off track was realize that there are very productive days for me and there are very unproductive days for me. So I realize that like Sundays are pretty much unproductive days just because I wanted to, you know, lounge around in my track suit at home because I just didn't feel like writing. But, you know, like the, during the week, um, in the morning and also in the early evening, I was productive. So I maximized that time and I was really proactive about um, staying on track because I also knew that, you know, if I didn't complete it today, I'm going to have to complete it tomorrow or somewhere down the line. So that is, that is something I would do. But thanks for the question, Epson. Anyone else with any questions? I didn't see any questions. I think maybe when we were switching back and forth between hosts, there may be some questions that you have. I don't have any on my end. Mm -hmm. Any more on yours? Uh, no, I think that's it. All right, well then I will thank you. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Dave Ng, for your presentation. I wanna thank everyone for joining us again for another collaborative. Um, that's it for the month of February. We're putting together our March schedule now. So just keep an eye out on your email for when the next one is scheduled. And until then, keep writing. That's our advice, right? Keep writing, keep working on your dissertation. And we look forward to supporting you with future collaborative activities. Have a good night, everyone. That's good, thank you, Candace.